All right, tech family, with me is one of the new Framework laptops for 2023. If you haven't heard about Framework, they're a new company that burst onto the scene about two years ago. Their unique focus is on delivering a fully upgradable and repairable laptop, which is exactly what we want. This takes a lot of stress out of the buying process as you no longer have to decide upfront what configuration you should get. You can relax knowing you can upgrade it later on. This also increases the longevity of the laptop and is of course better for the environment. So let me quickly update you on what they've been doing over the last two years. The biggest news is that they have updated their Framework 13.5 with Intel's latest 13th Gen and AMD Ryzen Zen 4 processors. I have one of them here today, which I'm going to put through the paces and tell you all about. They also have an upcoming larger 16-inch version, which has upgradable graphics and a cool swappable keyboard design that allows you to switch between a centered keyboard or one with a number pad. All laptops can be purchased as a full laptop, or if like me, you have an older framework, you can just purchase the upgrade kit, which is substantially cheaper than buying a completely new laptop. So that's what I went with, with the 13th Gen i7-1360P motherboard upgrade. By the way, I would have chosen the Ryzen Zen 4 version, but it wasn't shipping till Q3 of this year. I also have the new larger capacity battery, it's a 61 watt hour up from 57, and it is the same physical size as the older one. According to Framework, its capacity increased due to improvements in the lithium iron chemistry. I also have the new hinge, which promises to keep the screen stable while making it easier to open with one hand. Which is welcome, I did struggle to open the older one with one hand. There is a new matte display option. This will make the screen easier to read in bright lighting conditions that would have otherwise caused a lot of reflections. Other than that, it's the same panel, same resolution, colors, and brightness. I also have the new louder speakers and the new HDMI display port cards that will allow the laptop to stay in a low power state for better battery life while you have them in the laptop. Framework has also released a bunch of other upgrades over the last two years, such as a 2.5 gigabit ethernet card, and there is a cooler master case coming. This case is super cool, excuse the pun. It will convert your framework motherboard into a small desktop, again, further increasing the longevity and reuse of these parts. The upgrading process was as easy as it could be. Instructions were well laid out, and the care that the framework team has put into designing the laptop to be easy to upgrade was evident. For example, the screws to open the back of the laptop all stay in place so you don't lose them when the cover is off. The whole thing only uses one type of T5 screw bit. There are no annoying clips that make it very hard to get the back off the laptop. Also, it was cute that the team put their names and a message that the laptop was made with love inside. And if you happen to want a job with them, they put how to apply in there too. As an experienced person in upgrading laptops, it took me around 45 minutes to replace the motherboard, the speakers, and the battery, which is pretty embarrassing. I had two hiccups though. There was one connector that I almost broke because I just looked at the pictures and didn't read the instructions. Don't do what I did, read the instructions. Secondly, I spent a lot of time trying to work out why I had an extra screw. I thought there was something that I didn't screw in properly, so I kept rereading the instructions. I finally realized that the new motherboard came with a screw already screwed into the spot that keeps the SSD in place, so that is why I had one extra. After the upgrade, I had to go through the BitLocker key entry. If you don't want to have to do that, turn off BitLocker before you upgrade the device. BitLocker, by the way, it's Microsoft's disk level encryption. Just make sure you turn it back on after the upgrade if you want to ensure that people can't copy your files if your laptop is stolen. Once the upgrade was complete, I ran framework software to update the laptop's drivers. It was a very smooth process, and after this, everything seemed to work perfectly. I did not have to reinstall Windows, nor update anything else. When I say seemed, as I mentioned, I left BitLocker on before upgrading the device. Every time I restarted the laptop, it would ask me to re-enter my key, which was super annoying. After I turned BitLocker off, had it completely unencrypt the drive, then restarted the laptop and turned it back on, encrypting the drive, everything was fine. All right, upgrade complete. Was it worth it? Hell yes. The performance difference was immediately apparent. With all drivers and software up to date and running in best performance mode, in Geekbench 6, single core was up 25% and multi-core a whopping 59%. Geekbench 6, by the way, tests a variety of common performance tasks. In Cinebench, which tests how the laptop performs under full load, single core was up 30% and multi core literally 119%, which is more than twice as fast. Wow. If you are wondering what's happening behind the scene, my older 11th gen version of the laptop drew 50 watts of power at max. This new version draws 60. 
That being said, the older version averaged around 28 watts of power over a 10 minute torture test that is running Cinebench on a loop. The new version drew 31 watts. Clock speeds hit the advertised 5 GHz, but then averaged at 2.4, and CPU temperatures hit the max of 100 degrees. So you can really see the efficiency that's on display of Intel's 13th gen over the 11th. Under performance tasks, the keyboard deck felt very comfortable at a max of 42 degrees Celsius. That max, by the way, was around the top of the keyboard deck which you rarely use. So good result there. The underside though was hot. I wouldn't want to run any performance tasks on this laptop if it was sitting on my lap. When it comes to the speaker upgrade, I definitely noticed an improvement. The speakers were louder and clearer. For the music tracks I measured, I would say somewhere around 5 to 10 decibels. The new speakers also had a better sound stage. That being said, they absolutely do not come close to the speakers in my MacBook Pro 14. These speakers lack the fullness of those. There is literally no bass on these at all. So for the most part, all looks good with the framework laptop, right? Well, not exactly. The laptop's fans are loud, really, really loud. I measured 52 decibels when the laptop was under load on both my older Intel 11th gen version and the newly upgraded 13th gen one. This is extremely loud, definitely gaming laptop territory. What's worse is it only takes a small performance task and the fans spin up to that loud volume. For example, Dropbox is currently doing a sync in the background and you can see that the fans are loud. Installing a program will also do this. I'm not surprised this is the case as this laptop only has one fan. Most laptops with a processor this powerful would have two. This means this single fan has to work harder to cool the processor. I checked Frameworks community and Reddit and others have absolutely reported this. Now, I did try all the performance modes available. Balanced and best performance, they both had the same issue with the fans quickly hitting 52 decibels when any performance task was run. Best power efficiency mode was much quieter though at 42 decibels. Still not silent and a little audible in a quiet room, but better. That being said, the trade-off is a substantial drop in performance as the processor is now capped at 30 watts. I mean, look at my Geekbench scores on screen, 62% of single core and 75% of multi-core. My two cents, Framework should be offering these with lower powered and cheaper U-series processors. You are paying for performance that you likely can't use due to excessive fan noise. Maybe offer just one SKU with a P-series processor for those who just don't care about the fan noise. Look, we all hope the AMD Ryzen Zen 4 version is more frugal with power and therefore doesn't run as hot for similar tasks. But with this single fan design, I think it may be wishful thinking. You just can't beat physics. The next issue is battery life. For the test, I lowered the screen's brightness to 200 nits, then I ran the same Netflix movie on repeat over Wi-Fi for four hours. At the end of the test, the older 11th gen version with the smaller battery had 43% remaining, and the newer 13th gen one with the larger battery, 46%. This indicates around seven hours of battery life for this use case. Look, I'm disappointed here. And by the way, I spent a ton of time checking that there weren't rogue programs running in the background, I restarted the laptop, and I ran the test multiple times. Same results. This doesn't surprise me though, as in practice, I just haven't found Intel's 13th gen and 12th gen with those efficiency cores have really resulted in that much extra battery life. And one more gripe, albeit a minor one. The new Intel 13th gen motherboard only supports DDR4 RAM and not the newer faster DDR5. This does make the new motherboards backwards compatible though with your old RAM, as DDR5 modules do not use the same socket as DDR4. All right, let's wrap. Framework are doing a lot of things right, and I'm a big supporter. That being said, I have to call it as it is. I think the main type of person who should buy this laptop is someone who is using it in a very loud environment. That's because of the fan noise. For example, you are a software developer working in an open plan office or a loud co-working space. For someone like you, this laptop is a fantastic choice. And the other type of user that I can see enjoying this laptop is someone doing very lightweight tasks, who is happy to run the laptop in best power efficiency mode and is a dedicated supporter of Framework's mission to allow you to upgrade your laptops, which is a noble one. That's because you'd have to choose this over other excellent laptops, like the MacBook Air with M2, which has many benefits over this one, such as being dead silent, offering far more powerful graphics capabilities, and having much longer battery life. Well, what do you think of Framework's offering for 2023? Will you be buying one? And if not, what else are you looking at? Let me know in the comments below. 
If you like this video, you know what to do. Show me by smashing the like button and getting subscribed. Not only does it show your appreciation for the insane amount of effort that goes into making these, but as I always say, it makes my dearest mother very proud. If you need help picking your next laptop, make sure to check out our Discord server where vetted laptop advisors are standing by to help you out. Link below. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.